Hey everyone, I realize I've done a terrible job of keeping up with videos and so I am committing to at least releasing two videos every week uh, till the end of the year. So I'm going to find a way to make that happen no matter what. Um, my problem is like sometimes I, I, if I don't feel really inspired to do a video, I just don't do it. So I need to get better and better about putting some information out there. So I'm going to try to make these a little bit shorter. You guys know how I get with videos. Um, very long-winded. And uh, try to make them very informational. So there was something that was published yesterday in the Washington, I think the Washington Post, where they showed that a long time ago, um, the sugar industry uh, paid to basically uh, make it look like fat was uh, responsible for heart disease. And I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> it doesn't... Things like that don't surprise me. Um, I think where we have to be careful is we stop considering evidence. So that is not evidence that sugar is inherently bad for you. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Just because they did that does not mean that sugar is inherently bad for you. Okay? That's, I know this is a hard, this is like people who are against GMOs and they're, they're, Evidence is not research showing dangers of GMOs. Their evidence is Monsanto is evil and Monsanto forced these farmers off their land and Monsanto did this. Well, that may all be true. That may all be true, okay? That's like saying uh, O.J. Simpson was a terrible football player because he probably killed two people. No, O.J. Simpson was a fabulous football player who was a terrible human being. Okay? One is not in relation to the other. Okay? We have to take those things and separate them. So, let's talk about the research with regards to sugar. So, if you look at sugar, sugar is correlated with uh, obesity. Even though, I will say, so, you know, over the last 50 years, sugar intake has gone up and obesity has gone up. But if you look at the last 10 years, I think uh, James Krieger posted a nice graph of this the other day. Um, obesity has continued to rise while sugar consumption has completely leveled off and actually gone down. Okay, so if sugar was causing, and again, correlation is not causation, and even in the reverse way, but if sugar was really causing obesity, would we expect to see a, a, therefore, a drop as sugar consumption dropped? So I think what we need to look at this is actually look in depth and say, okay, yes, yeah, sure, sugar is associated with obesity, but is that because if you eat a high sugar diet, you are just consuming more calories. And let's think about where most people get their sugar. A lot is from high fructose corn syrup, uh, sugary drinks, those sorts of things, right? If somebody drinks a Coke, they usually aren't saying, well, that's 50 grams of sugar, so I'm going to replace that, uh, I'm going to take 50 grams of carbohydrate out of my diet and replace it with this Coke. Um, no, they're usually just drinking the Coke and eating their normal diet on top of it, okay? Everything's a trade-off, and it's all about what you replace with, okay? So if you look at the actual research, um, there are a multitude of studies comparing uh, high-sugar diets versus low-sugar diets, okay? And one such study examined the results of high-sugar versus low-sugar. It was, uh, I think, 25 grams versus 50 grams per day. Again, that's not a huge difference in sugar intake, but they saw no difference in fat loss, okay? Uh, probably more telling was a study that was done that was a very large, very long study, six-month study, a uh, six-month study, free-living study, where they looked at high sugar intakes versus low sugar intakes and saw no difference in fat gain or fat loss when calories were equated, okay? This was a study done in Europe. Um, and that was on a large number of people over a long time. Now, the criticism of that can be it's a free-living study, there's a lot of confounding variables, Completely reasonable, completely reasonable. But there was also a study, I think, done at the University of Minnesota, where they took people for 12 weeks and did a higher sugar diet or a lower sugar diet, and they actually housed them, like, in clinical setting. Okay, so they fed these people, they made and fed them all the meals, right? So they looked at high GI versus low GI, high sugar versus low sugar. Fed them every single meal, controlled calories, and saw zero difference in fat loss. Okay, so that tends to be a little bit more telling of a study because now you have these other studies that are suggesting that, and now you have a, 
a very tightly controlled study suggesting that. Um, but then the, the, some of the other criticisms will be, okay, well that's, that was, um, that was not a huge difference in sugar intake, right? Well, there was once, there was a, another study done where they looked at like over 100 grams of sugar per day versus like 10 grams of sugar per day in calorically restricted people. Say, both groups ate the same total amount of calories. And they found zero difference again in fat loss, right? So the next criticism sugar will typically get levied at it is, well, what about, okay, well, do you, okay, no difference in fat loss, but what about overall health? Like, you know, it can't be healthy for you. Well, if you look at these, the, the results of these people's blood lipids and, and blood panels from these studies, they're the same. They're the same. It's the caloric restriction that's driving these changes. Now, that being said, in the, the last study I mentioned, high sugar versus low sugar, the low sugar group of both groups, I want to be very specific, both groups, high and low sugar, both improved their blood cholesterol profiles. The group consuming the lower sugar diet improved it a little bit more. And by a little bit, I mean a really small amount, but it was statistically significant. That being said, that is probably, again, I can't say for sure, but that is probably due to the low sugar group getting more fiber, okay? It's very hard to eat high fiber if you're also eating high sugar. In fact, a lot of the downsides associated with, low sugar, with high sugar diets are from low fiber, okay? That's also why when you look at these associations, you don't see the same association uh, with fruit as you do with refined sugar because fruit has, has fiber with it, okay? So fiber binds to cholesterol and can lower cholesterol, okay? So you have, you have that would be my guess as to why you're getting that small difference in cholesterol numbers. Again, both groups improved. It's just the low sugar diet improved a little bit better. Um, probably from increased fiber consumption, reduce binding to and excreting uh, dietary cholesterol. And then if you look at other markers like markers of inflammation, blood pressure, blood lipids, they're all the same. So there's really nothing that we can sit there and say, oh, sugar is, is worse for you, or that it's even pro-inflammatory. It's not pro-inflammatory if you control calories. That's the biggest driver. Now, there are some studies out there that show, what about total carbs? Because carbs just break down into sugar. Well, uh, if you control protein and calories, there's no difference in these outcomes. There's a study done at Arizona State University looking at a ketogenic diet versus a non-ketogenic equal protein diet and found no difference in fat loss, okay? So again, it's, it is, caloric deficit driving these changes. Now, that being said, it's very hard to create a caloric deficit and be satisfied if you're eating a lot of sugar. Uh, sugar is not high in fiber. To, sh things that are high in sugar are not high in fiber. They're not very filling. And so sure, you can eat a lot of sugar, but you're gonna be pretty hungry, especially in a caloric deficit, right? Now, if you're somebody who's in the off season or a building phase and your calories are up very high, then you can probably have more sugar and not really worry about it because you're, as long as you're controlling calories, um, it's, it's not going to be a big deal because you're also going to be getting enough fiber. You're going to be full from, from, from eating in a surplus. So there's no reason you can't do that. So I'm not saying go out and drink a bunch of Cokes and eat a bunch of sugar and all this kind of stuff. What I'm saying is that if you control for overall calories, there's no reason you can't incorporate some sugar into your diet live a healthy lifestyle, and enjoy foods that you like. All right, guys, that's this video for this week. Um, if you want more information about how to flexible diet, check out my website at avatarnutrition.com. It's uh, for $10 a month. It formulates custom macronutrients based on your uh, individual body type metabolism and then adjusts them every week uh, based on how you respond. It's a great deal. Check it out, avatarnutrition.com. Later, guys.